So I did a video probably about a year and a half ago, two years ago, um, how to find work for your dump truck. And uh, I've gotten a lot of requests to do an update on that video. And so I figure I'd do one. Um, the number one way to find work for your dump truck is not watching my videos. <laughs> it's out there making phone calls. I mean, that's really, you wanna find work for a dump truck? You need to start calling people. You need to start pounding the ground. Um, in Washington State, there are no brokers. There are what we call dispatchers. And you can give your money to them all you want. You know, they'll take your money as long as you're willing to give it to them. And they'll find you work, but you're gonna pay 25 bucks a day, 30 bucks a day, you know, for that work. Um, I'm not willing to pay that. So I call lots of companies, lots of people, and I find work without paying fees because I'm not gonna pay a fee for somebody to send me a text message. It's really simple to find work, guys. Like, I don't even know why I have to do a video on this. Like, the work is so easy to find. Like, you just call people that use your service, right? And part of this other video was, how do you know what to charge? Right? I believe that was part of this other video. How do you know what to charge? How do you know what to charge? Um, and basically, in my last video, I said you basically got to charge what you got to charge. You know, and honestly, my opinion hasn't really changed on that. You need to charge what you need to charge to make your business worth it to you or lucrative to you. Or, you know, don't sell yourself short. If you sell yourself short, you're going to go out of business without even knowing it. Because things are going to start breaking and you won't have the money to fix them. You'll, you, you know, you'll be good for six months, nothing will break, and you'll be like, okay, I don't need that money saved up for this. Or I don't need my money saved up for that. And the next thing you know, something major breaks and you don't have any money to pay for it. And then you're out of business. That's simple. Or you go further into debt. And then something else happens and you go even further into debt and then next thing you know there's no work and then you're out of business so it's really simple you know um generally each specific area has like a rate like people normally charge this people normally charge that you know like in washington dirt work charges anywhere from 115 to 125 an hour Right? So all you have to do to really figure out what the rate is for your area, you go out there and you ask a few dump truckers, hey man, what do you charge per hour? What do you charge per hour? You know, or when you get on a job site, hey, what's the rate for this job? You know? And then that's how you kind of set your own rate, right? And on the last video I did, a lot of people said, well, you can't set your own rate. And frankly, yes, you can set your own rate. And you should set your own rate. Because what happens is, the reason so many areas are so low on rates is because they just accept what people are giving them. Dude, we are outlaws, man. We need to be out there taking what we deserve, you know? And at first, yes, it'll be hard to get what you want for your rate. It'll be hard. But then once things start picking up, you'll start getting what you want and people will know that you would demand a certain amount of money and then they have to pay it. I mean, that's just the way it works, you know? Obviously, when you're a little guy and you have just one piece of equipment, you kind of have to go with what they're paying. But you don't have to. You should, you know, just, you know, just get some money coming in, you know what I mean? Just go along with what they're doing and then once you get established and you have a nice savings account established, then you can charge whatever the hell you want to charge. You know, for me personally, somebody calls me up and say, hey man, this job's paying 110 an hour. I say, nope, no thanks. 
hey man, this job's paying 100 bucks an hour cash at the end of the day. No thanks. Ain't doing it. My truck does not turn over for less than 115 an hour. And my equipment, guess what? That don't turn over for less than 120 an hour either. I got people calling me every day. Hey man, I got this job. You know, what, what does it cost to rent your equipment? Sorry, I don't rent. What I do is I say 120 bucks an hour, six hour minimum. That's all I charge. Some people say, well, you got to charge move in, move out. I don't charge move in or move out. It doesn't take me very long to strap my equipment down. and I mean, it takes time, but I figure with the six hour minimum, I'm making enough money, profit, that I don't need to charge a move in and move out. I don't rent my equipment because people abuse stuff. People will abuse your equipment. They will not treat it good. You'll, you'll rent something out. Next time you get it back, it'll have dents, scratches everywhere. Everywhere. And even if you're using your own equipment, you're going to get dents and scratches. I understand that, you know. We're in the construction industry, so that happens. But I don't want people denting my stuff. I want to be the one to dent it. Because then it tells a story, you know, about my personal operating skills, you know. And, uh... You know, but anyways, you need to charge what you need to charge. Don't let other people set the rate for you. I mean, to a certain extent, yes. Obviously, if the standard rate for your area is 115 to 125 an hour, you're not just going to say, well, I charge 150 an hour. Good luck with that, buddy. You ain't going to get any work. You know, there's obviously limits to it, you know. You have to charge what the economy is willing to pay also. So if you can't offer a service that the economy is willing to pay for that specific skill set, you're going to go out of business, right? So you can't overcharge and you definitely don't want to undercharge because undercharging is the silent killer. I mean, that's the one that comes up behind you and just, you know, Overcharging, you just ain't gonna get any work, and you're gonna know it the whole time. You're gonna be like, man, I ain't working, everybody else is working, I'm not working. You know? I remember when I first started my business, before I bought this dump truck, I watched one YouTube video, just one. Okay, maybe two videos, because that's all there really was on YouTube about, you know, starting a dump truck business. Um, and one was Attack Bishop. And he gave some really good advice. He said, you think you're going to get work, you're not going to get work. Unless the person you think you're going to get work from is your cousin or your brother, you're not getting work from them. And that's dead on. Like, I thought a lot of people were going to help me. They didn't give me a single penny worth of work. None of them. You know, I had to get out there. I had to start making calls. I started calling people up and said, hey man, got a dump truck, I rent, you know, and then on top of that, before I started my business, I created a marketing machine, you know, everybody I talk to, I talk about my dump truck to everybody, I don't care who I'm talking to, if I'm talking to a little girl, you know, or a little boy down the street, a little kid, I'm talking about my dump truck to them, everybody. Everybody I talk to, I make it a point to bring up my dump truck business. If I'm at church, I'm talking about my business. Is that criminal? Is that wrong? No, it's not wrong. It's how I make my living. And if you're not marketing, then you're not making it, right? So you need to be talking about your business to everybody. That's just the way it works. And that's another reason why I do these YouTube videos is because one day my business won't be only in Washington. It might be in all 50 states. It might be in 48 states. Who knows? Who knows what the business is going to evolve into, you know? But as of right now, my number one marketing plan is 
I will advertise to everybody I come in contact with. Everybody. Right? That's why I have done so well in my business. Because from the day I bought this truck, the day I bought it, when it was a hunk of junk and it wasn't street worthy and I wasn't even driving it, I immediately, hey man, I just bought a dump truck. I'm going to get my business going. I bought a dump truck. I'm going to get my business going. I bought a dump truck. In three months, I'm going to be on the road. I bought a dump truck. In one month, I'm going to be on the road. Everybody I talked to, I talked about my business and how I was succeeding, how I was working my way to it, right? I didn't waste time looking up videos on how to do this or how to do that or you know, I wasn't sitting watching Facebook. I wasn't on the Facebook page, you know, asking anybody for work. I was out there making the work happen. From day one, I've been making the work appear, you know. Nobody's going to just give you work. Nobody's just going to give you work because they feel sorry for you. And if they do, well, you're lucky, dude. You're lucky. And, you know, if you're that lucky that people just, you know, give you work just because you're their friend, do good on you, man. You're doing something I'm not, you know. And I've done a lot for a lot of people, you know, and I thought I was going to get a lot of help, but no, none of it. The reason I'm so successful is because I put myself out there every single day. Every single day I put myself out there. Another reason why I have a lot of work. So there's those dispatchers, right, that I talked about. They charge people 30 bucks a day, 25 bucks a day to give them work, right? For them, it's a pain in the butt to make 20 million phone calls to find the trucks they need. Yes, they're getting paid for it, but 25 bucks ain't that much, right? So how do I make myself more useful? I make the phone calls for him. I make the phone calls for him. There's a dispatcher up in Seattle. You know, he's constantly needing trucks. I say, hey man, I got a few trucks down south that are looking for work, you know? And I constantly tell people that I'm dispatching trucks. Even though I wasn't dispatching trucks, I constantly told people, I'm dispatching trucks. I'm dispatching trucks. And I just kept pounding it into their head. You know, that every time they thought of me, that guy dispatches trucks. Now I'm dispatching trucks. I'm dispatching two, three, four a day, right? And what it is, is the guy's calling me for work, I find him four trucks. Why is this beneficial to me? This is beneficial to me because here's why. When he has work, he calls me first. That makes my truck on the job site first, right? That means I'm gonna have work before any of those other four trucks because they don't know who to call except for call me. Right? Okay, guys, I gotta get inside this cab. It's starting to rain. I'm not trying to get rained on while I do this video. <laughs> it's cold. Okay. Hopefully, the lighting isn't too bad. Oh, ooh, it's starting to rain out there. Um, so, if realistically, guys, if you wanna find work, here's the number one mistake, and I made this mistake myself too. The number one mistake for finding work for dump trucks, do not call other dump truckers. Do not call them. They don't have work for you. They're trying to find work for themselves. That's the number one mistake of all dump truckers. You start calling other dump truckers because you think, oh, they're a dump trucker, they got work. I'm gonna call them. Like they're gonna give you their work. Like, come on. They're not gonna give you their customer the heck you can't call other dump truckers for work if you want a steady reliable source of income you do not call your competition for their work that's not the way it works you need to start calling companies that hire you the people that are going to hire you here's the people you want to call excavation contractors home builders and i'm speaking only for solo trucks because 
That's all I got. I don't really know, you know, who else to call, right? So I'm just telling you, for my particular situation with the solo truck, I would be calling excavation companies, excavating contractors. I'll be calling um, asphalt uh, companies, companies that do repair, commercial, residential, industrial, you know, obviously with a dump truck, you can't, there's not a whole lot of industrial or commercial job sites that you'll be on with a dump truck hauling dirt because if it's industrial or commercial, they're normally hiring a truck and trailer. So you're not really going to get those gigs, right? <clears throat> but home builders where they're digging out foundations, you know, or they're digging out basements or they're, you know, that type of stuff. That's who you want to call. The people that are going to hire you because they don't have a dump truck. All they got is a machine, right? Those are the people you want to call. Even the companies, and here's a good, good one to call, is even the companies that already have one dump truck. A lot of times they're going to need more than one dump truck. So those are also good people to get your name out with. Now, um, a lot of people don't like hauling concrete. You know, I fell into a customer that has treated me very well. All they do is saw cut concrete, concrete slabs and stuff. Their main business objective is cutting concrete. That's, a, that's their main business is cutting concrete. But they have one dump truck. And when they get on a big job site, who do they call? They call me because they know I can get trucks. And they know I'm on time every time, right? I'm reliable. And, you know, they don't need dump trucks that often. But when they do, I'm the one they call, you know? And the way this customer fell into my lap, it all goes back to marketing. I gave a buddy one of these shirts for free. He wore it into work the next day. Next thing I know, they were calling me up. Hey, hey. Brian, I heard you got a dump truck. We need a dump truck over there at Boeing. I said, okay, what do I got to do? You know, because Boeing's a secure facility and all this and that. I'm like, well, you got to get your ID badge and this and that. I said, okay, done. I'll do it tomorrow. I did it the next day. Next thing I know, I'm on Boeing job sites, you know, with my dump truck. And these are job sites, you know, I'm not going to go into do too much detail. I don't really need to go into detail on this um, because we're on a totally different subject. But they're cake. I sit there all day. I do nothing. They load my truck with the forklift. Like there's literally, you know, two loads a day, maybe. It's gravy work, right? So the way you find work for dump truck is calling not your competition, you're calling your customers. Who are your potential customers? You need to figure out who are your potential customers. That's who you need to be calling. A lot of times, they will be using somebody to dispatch their trucks. That's the way it goes. They've already got somebody who's finding their trucks. Keep, keep contacting them. Keep bothering them. Keep calling them. Eventually, they're going to break and they're going to say, okay, we'll put you out on a job. They're going to need you. One of these times you call, they're going to need you. You know, sooner or later, it's going to happen. They ain't going to be able to find enough trucks because it's summertime. They're going to need one extra truck. You're going to be their guy. And then once you got your foot in the door, your foot's in the door, you know. Then they ain't going to pull you out. They ain't going to rip you out. Because if you get on that job site and you prove yourself that one time, boom, you're set. I mean, that's just the way it works. You're just like, you know, a little seed. Like, have you ever seen those, you know, you're walking through a field and the little seed gets on your shoe and then you get home and next thing you know, it's like halfway in your shoe and you can't even pull it out. Once it gets in there, it just starts working its way, working its way. It's like a little sliver and it just keeps going and going and going and gets in there. That's what you need to do as a business owner. You get in there, you prove yourself and then you're set. I mean, you just keep doing what you're supposed to do. And that's how you get more customers. You know? And 
you know a lot of people told me that you you can't charge what you want to charge that's bull crap i charge what i want to charge you know and at first i couldn't do that you're definitely right at first you can't do that but when you start diversifying your business like i have i b bought a dozer i got two excavators i diversified my business so when a customer comes to me, I can charge what I want to charge. If they don't like it, they can go get a quote somewhere else. I'm not going to die from it because I got a steady workflow so I can charge what I want to charge and they can either take it or they can leave it. I mean, I'm not the cheapest guy on the block. I'll be honest. I'm not the cheapest guy. Number one, I'm not trying to put myself out of business. Number two, I want to grow my business. And if you're not growing, you're shrinking. I mean, there just really is no middle ground where you're just plateauing. There's no plateau. You're either growing or you're shrinking. I mean, that's... You can't walk along a fence and not slip off and hit your, you know, your goods. You can't do that. You're either walking up or you're walking down. I mean, that's just the way it goes, guys. There is no flat ground on this. You know, your business is either growing or it's shrinking. You know, and uh, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to pound that like button. Don't forget to subscribe for all you new watchers. We got a lot of great content we're putting out. Um, everything from how to start a dump truck business to finding customers to fixing the equipment we got everything we got everything on here and uh this really is one-stop shop youtube channel you know for dump truck businesses because i've covered literally everything about running a dump truck business on this channel I'd like to thank you guys for watching thank you for liking this video and uh i'll catch you on the next one guys